Good Sunday morning, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. We've got a very nice start to the end of the weekend coming up, and no problems at all being seen at this time. We do have some scattered showers back off to our west. We'll talk more about what we're going to be looking for into the rest of the forecast tonight, but chances of rain, not really seeing a lot of opportunities for it immediately, but if you do have any plans for outdoors, we'll continue again to monitor that into the rest of the evening for tonight, so stick around for more on that that. We'll also talk a little bit more about your pictures. Thank you very much for sending those in out there. And also stay tuned again for more information about how you can get ready for severe weather. We'll talk about all that in just a little bit. If you've never joined us before, this is our exclusive video weather blog called Weather Overtime. This is our opportunity to tell you in detail more about what's going on with the weather. Don't have this opportunity on, line, on air, so online it's a lot easier to kind of explain things and to answer questions. Speaking of which, if you have any, put those into the comments section, especially put down your city and state where you're from. And then also, if you have a weather report, we'd love to see some temperatures. If you have a weather station, give us some wind speeds, wind direction, humidity, stuff like that out there. And we'll read those out as we go throughout the rest of the next several minutes. So again, city, state, and weather reports. If you haven't, let's do some amateur meteorology here together this morning and show where everybody's from and what's going on in your particular location. Questions, concerns, comments, ideas, anything like that, send them to me at Austin onic at wreg.com. Likewise, you can see our seven-day forecast, and also that's available at wreg.com slash weather right there. Rest of the day, again, seeing more cloud cover out there, mostly sunny across the Mid-South right now, partly cloudy as we go into around lunchtime, still some very mild temperatures out there, and chances of rain start to move in in earnest as we go into late this afternoon and into this evening. We do see some rain showers west of us this morning, not a threat to us for right now. We'll explain why that is is coming up in just a little bit. Some of those clouds off the showers and thunderstorms, you can see those quite nicely drifting on through the area. The view from Germantown High School right across the road on top of the water towers, Poplar and Mendenhall Towers, Poplar Pike and Germantown Road in Germantown, Tennessee, looking very nice for this morning, and temperatures back in the mid-40s, but here's what we're looking at for this morning. This is nice, it's cool, but it's not exactly bone-chilling cold. Look at this number right here, 48% humidity. That, for this time of the morning, is bone dry air and that means that any rain that's out this way moving our direction is going to have a hard time dropping from several thousand feet down down to the surface. This right here is going to do a very good job of ripping those raindrops apart and giving us again a very good evaporation going on out there. Pope Mississippi, Jeffrey Griffiths, thank you very much for 44 degrees. Clear and sunny reporting there. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Again, thanks to everybody else for checking on in. Uh, for the Mid-South area. Uh, Theris Warren, what time the rain coming in? We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. Traveling by air this morning, live view of Memphis International Airport showing minimal delays out across the area close to uh, cl uh, around uh, 240 in airways. Fair skies, no clouds below 12,000 feet and showing delays of 15 minutes or less at Memphis International. Likewise, we're not seeing anything in the way of delays across the continental United States for now. That storm system out out west could be giving us some problems into the next 24 hours and that nor'easter off the east coast that's heading out into the Atlantic and should not be a problem for anybody else anytime soon Now we want to focus just a little bit on the Mississippi River and the other river levels across the Mid-South. Even though the rain has stopped, the river level is still rising. Everything in the rivers and streams around the rest of the Mid-South is draining into that channel right there, and the river is still going upwards. You can see flooding taking place between what used to be the, e the west bank of the Mississippi and all the way back over to West Memphis. So we've got some pretty good flooding going on, and the river is going to continue to head upwards into the next few days which is going to prompt a little bit of backup again as that water drains away. There may be barriers up on certain roadways that flood and you do not want to be driving through those. So if the authorities have some barriers up that say flood water is impassable, stuff like that, they are there for a reason. Do not drive around them. Again, turn around, don't drown, find another way to get to where you're going. It will be inconvenient, it will cost you extra time, but you will also be alive. 
It's an amazing bonus right there. So again, don't drive around the water barriers out there. We have flood warnings in effect for numerous locations across the Mid-South area, the Mississippi, numerous rivers and streams in Mississippi, Arkansas, back into Tennessee, Alabama, and up into Missouri and Kentucky. So a lot of places, low-lying areas are still going to have this problem into the course of the next several days. So again, this is where we're going to be seeing the main problem out there. Not much rainfall to report at this time directly in the Mid-South. Ricky Lee, how much rain did we get last month? Well, using uh, Memphis as a baseline on that, we did get a record amount. Matter of fact, what we just went through was the wettest February ever in Memphis history. We've got about somewhere over about at least 12 inches of rainfall, so a very decent amount of rain out across the Mid-South area and more on the way. Now, we do have some showers just back to the area just west of the area close to around Phillips County and Lee County, all the way back into around portions of eastern areas of central Arkansas. But here's the thing about this rainfall out a little farther away from us, from Fayetteville Mountain Home back to around Eureka Springs, all the way down to Monroe in Louisiana. You are seeing an occasional flare-up of some lightning taking place here. It's not much, but it is still possible. Now, this is moving into the dry air we were just talking about. So a lot of this is going to be falling apart as it gets closer to us. The cloud cover will continue to make its way over the area, but we'll continue to see these chances of showers and thunderstorms into central Arkansas, I think, more than anything else. So if you're heading west or southwest, you may run into more of this activity just away from us. But outside of a sprinkle or two, I just don't see too much of anything happening yet. Now into tonight, that's a different story as this storm system gears up and makes its way a little bit closer to us. We'll talk about that in our forecast in just a little while. Upper 40s to lower 50s, temperatures rising nicely, mainly easterly winds for today helping to, again, transport in a little bit more moisture in the form of cloud cover into the area for right now. Uh, let's take a look around for the area for right now. How's the weather looking for tomorrow? Crystal Hicks, we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Denise Truett Allen from Arlington can feel the rain coming. That's a good talent. I don't have that. I mean, I can tell, but I don't feel stuff like that. But I do know a lot of people who are very sensitive to those uh, types of changes out there. And Carol Gaudet, hope I'm saying that right, tired of the rain, my yard needs to dry up. A lot of people out there with that same concern out across the Mid-South. Now through mid to late morning, running the numbers, getting some more cloud cover out to around eastern Arkansas and southern Missouri. And again, chances of rainfall mainly linger back to our west. Pleasant today, mid-60s for highs, winds coming in out of the southeast, so we should see some very nice weather for the rest of the day today. Getting into tonight, Around dinner time and afterwards, we're still waiting for the rainfall to arrive as we go close to News Channel 3 at 10. Temperatures remain well above freezing, so no chance of anything frozen coming our way. Chances of rain, again, this leading edge. We may see some rain on the radar by News Channel 3 at 10. I'm just doubting we're going to see much of anything hitting the surface until probably right after midnight into Monday. And that's when the heaviest amount of rainfall starts to get a little bit closer to us. As it does, we'll continue to see these showers continue across the area as we get into around very early Monday morning. Rain and commute times in the Mid-South never mix together well, so it's a very good possibility that Corey Ventura is going to have a lot to talk about tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Likewise, Todd Demers, when he returns for the forecast tomorrow, after a few days off, it looks like it's going to be pretty active out there as well with more chances of rain. And I'm going to throw in some thunderstorms on here as well for late tonight into early tomorrow. Threat for severe weather is this marginal threat zone back toward the Arklatex area. This is the target for the possibility of some severe weather later on today. Not much, and as it's, you can see, it's well away just past Little Rock into around that area down toward the Red River south of I-40, Fort Smith down to about Shreve. Now, this green area is not listed here. It's just generic thunderstorms. And I think we may see some of that late tonight toward about midnight or so. And this again could be, again, something we see into overnight, so getting the morning going. Now, tomorrow, as we get to around close to around daybreak and into the rest of the morning, we could see the possibility of a marginal threat area for the Mid-South, once again, a little bit closer to us, right into areas close to around portions of, say, Coahoma, Quitman, back into around Panola counties in Mississippi, 
and points southward. That'll be the best target zone for severe weather tomorrow. We also again see that light green category, the possibility of just generic thunderstorms here, all the way up to Dyersburg, the Boot Heel, and northeast Arkansas. So again, outdoor activities tomorrow, this is going to have to be taken into account. And for the rest of the day, some very mild numbers, but I still think it's going to be late this afternoon into this evening before we really pick up anything substantial with the way of rainfall. So it'll start about this time and then continue into overnight. And as you go into very early tomorrow, your commute time both to and from work and school could contain the possibility of showers at least and maybe some thunderstorms out there as well. So taking the kids to school in the morning and picking them back up again to take them home, you may need the umbrella. There could be some mad dashes taking place between the school building and the car rider line. So something to think about, maybe some rain protection uh, into tomorrow as we go throughout the next couple of days. Now, early on Tuesday, some more chances of showers and thunderstorms. Again, it'll be very early in the morning and then clearing out throughout the rest of Tuesday. The rest of the week, this storm system is coming through out west that we just showed you a few minutes ago. It's rotating through. The storm systems in the northern hemisphere rotate counterclockwise. So as that moves away from us, on the back side of that counterclockwise is going to be some dry and cool air coming on through. It doesn't look like an Arctic blast, but if you're going to have kids waiting out at the school bus stop, you've got some very cool air coming in as we get into into around Thursday morning and Friday morning, and also for that matter, Wednesday morning as well, uh, into and around the area there. So we could again see that potential out there for right now. Lisa Williams Frazy, hope I'm saying that right. Bells, Tennessee, don't need any more rain. It'll flood again. Yeah, unfortunately, the rain could aggravate the flooding situation, so that's not good news out there. Betty Levingston, any for Tate County? Yes, a very good possibility on that. And as we go into the next few days, a lot of places will be affected by that rising water as we dump more rainfall into this drainage shed. So this could be something we need to pay attention to. Next chance of rainfall after Monday and Tuesday will be coming up next Saturday. That's where we see, again, that potential for around showers and thunderstorms, and a pretty good one for right now. And when you see this this far out, this is usually something to really start paying attention to. Now, seven to ten days out, things will change a lot between here and there, so keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for updates on what we could see as we refine the forecast. Way out here, again, you're seeing more suggestions to the forecast than anything else. The closer you get in time, the more concrete, the more focused we can get and show you a little bit more about what's happening. But here, uncertainty is still running decently high, so we can see an idea as to what's coming. But once once again, things will be changing. For those of you who are going to be bemoaning the fact that this is fake science, well, this is the best forecasting numbers that we can give you and best forecasting ability that we can show you that will give you an idea as to what's happening, which is a far cry from just reading the sky from about two to 300 years ago. So something to consider there when you're about to shout fake science is something there. Thanking Kelvin Gates, a nice view from just south of the Windy City. Wind farm up on I-57, about two hours south of Chicago, under some very nice blue skies, so thank you, Mr. Gates, on that one. Memphis underscore Tom, across the pond where the beast from the east is slamming parts of Europe, major winter storm taking place, bringing heavy snow to the United Kingdom, parts of Europe, and back into around Scandinavia, and noticing a snowman waiting for the train around Birmingham uh, about a day or so ago. So thank you, Memphis underscore Tom, for keeping us updated on your travels there. And a beautiful sunrise this morning from northeast Arkansas. Thank you very much, frequent contributor Louis Haskett. Tons more from around the Mid-South area. This is all we have time for for right now. If you have weather pictures, we'd love to see them and feature them on our netcast like this, but we can't show them if you don't send them. You kind of see the problem out there. My psychic powers are a little below par this morning to, again, just reach out and figure out what you've been taking pictures of. So you can send them to me on my Facebook page, my Instagram page, Aonic no underscore necessary WREG3, Aonic underscore WREG3 on Twitter, and you can find out more about what's going on out there again by following me on those social media channels. Now, in the next week is going to be a very busy week for Skywarn training. Skywarn is a volunteer organization taught by meteorologists from the National Weather Service. These meetings that you see here and many more like them coming up over the next several weeks are free, paid for by your tax dollars and my tax dollars. One of the best ways tax dollars have ever been spent, in my not-so-humble opinion, and a great way for you to get trained on severe weather. Next one is tomorrow evening at 6.30 in West Memphis, Arkansas. 
Kennett, Missouri, Tuesday evening in the Boot Heel. Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in Dresden, Tennessee at the Weekly County Law Enforcement Center. That's going to be at 7951 Highway, 50, uh, Highway 22. And coming up this next Saturday in the morning, you're going to have to get up pretty early for this, around Jonesboro at the Craighead County Arkansas State University Union Auditorium. Great opportunity, again, to learn more about this. You show up, you take the course, you get trained, boom, done. You are more prepared for severe weather than a lot of other people. And the more people we have watching for severe weather, the more people can be protected. If you are in, say, West Memphis and you see a storm going north-northeast, you can tell the National Weather Service by calling in on your phone, or if you're an amateur radio operator, you can wire that in as quickly as possible. National Weather Service can lend your reports to the rest of the area, including media people like me that can let everybody else know across the Mid-South where the worst danger is. And more importantly, if you're in the path of this storm, you can get ready. Ground truth, I think as it's called, is something that you can participate in. You don't have to be a scientist to participate in scientific studies or to help in emergency preparedness. And this is one of the best ways that you can do so. Please consider becoming a spotter. Show up, take the course. It's about an hour out of your time, and that's about it. So if you'd like to know more, great opportunity to go here, scroll down beneath the forecast, or email me at austin.onyx.wreg.com, and I'll let you know a little bit more about this one into and around the area for the time being. So again, what we're seeing for right now. Ernest Holton, any more snow in sight before spring? Well, we've got two more weeks of winter left, and it's always possible, but we're not seeing anything immediately, so definitely good news uh, into and around the area for right now. Thank you very much for everybody else for checking in from this morning, and good morning to everybody who's just been checking in uh, so far across the area. If you can't check in with the forecast because you're away from your computer and your cell phone has no service and you're driving around the Mid-South, dial us up on the radio. My forecast available on Oldies 102.3 and Country 92.5. I'll be back on the air with Bob and Josh tomorrow morning on AM 730 on Talkback Live, so make certain you stay tuned for more on that. And, of course, if you got anything out there to send, please let me know. I'm available on all these social media networks, and you can get more about that in the red bar at the bottom of your screen as well. If you'd like to see my email address scrolling by there right now, and, of course, all the other social media networks that I'm on for, again, identification, if you'd like to see a little bit more out there for there. Now, coming up in about 10 minutes or so, I'll be on my Facebook page with another edition of Weather Overtime. Brief check of the weather, but we also focus on weather where the troops are. It's our little salute to everybody out there who is serving the United States military in whatever form or fashion or branch of the services, plural. And if you'd like to know more about the various outposts that may be seeing weather around the world, we'll take a look at that coming up at about 8.33. And, of course, keep you updated on the forecast throughout the rest of the weekend. Join us tonight at 5 and 10. Kristen Holloway has all the day's news. Mike Sadie has an update on sports. And, of course, yours truly will be here with more information on the forecast as we head into this week. Probably active Storm Tracker 3S radar tonight, and we'll bring you more about that again coming up here in just a little bit. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, I'm meteorologist Austin Onick from the News Channel 3 Severe Weather Center. Stay tuned for more from News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the day on air and online.